December the 2nd, fog. Wheezing William, poisoned by Vile Vincent. December the 3rd, rain. Simple Sidney hit himself over the head with a hammer to see what it felt like. <laughs> Died instantly. One moment. What are these? Ritz. Uh, I didn't touch them. You did? I didn't. They were not put into my hands by the bailiff, therefore they have not been served. That is the law, Grant. Well, that's not exactly true. You did look at them. What? Do you question the word of a gentleman? No, sir. Then keep a civil tongue in your head. Oh. How did you come by these... Ritz? Documents. A man gave them to me in the grounds. What? The rogue came into the grounds? Fetch me my fowling piece. He's out of range, sir. Then I spit upon him. I spit upon you, and I spit upon these, uh, Brit? Papers! P please don't spit on them, sir. Makes the ink run. <laughs> you seem very concerned over this matter, Grunch. Tell me, why did this man involve you in my private affairs? He took me for you, sir. <laughs> but you're a menial, Grunch. I know. He took you for a gentleman. Look at me, Grunge. I'm haggard by blood and lineage. Mark the fine features, the aristocratic brow, the aquiline nose. All the signs of a noble birth. Yes. Certainly puts pay to those rumours that you were left by gypsies. Yes. <laughs> and look at you, Grunge. The face of a menial, the low brow, the slobbering lips, the servile fawning gait. They say in France that all men were born equal. You weren't. You were born under a hedge, Grant. They talk of liberty, equality and fraternity. They say that one day the rivers will run red with the blood of the aristocracy. Not around here, they won't. And I'm not interested in what a nation of onion nibblers and mincing dressmakers have to say. <laughs> and as for you, Grant, if you repeat these lies and have you whipped from Haggard Hall to the inn at Shreshford... Yes, sir. I raised you, Grant, and I can put you down. Yes, sir. I raised you from footman to steward. And I raise your wages to five pounds a year. That's nearly two shillings a week. Does that mean anything? What have you paid? <laughs> How can I pay it? Look at these writs! Ah! Ah! <laughs> My debt stretch out before me like a whore in bed. And it's a long time since I've seen one of those. <laughs> Look at this, even the doctor grows impatient. Half a guinea for attending the birth of my son, Roderick. Well, he's 25, sir. <laughs> I must pay my wig maker first. I need a new wig grant. <laughs> yes, that one's never been the same since the dog's got it. <laughs> I have to go abroad in my own hair. People are pointing. They know it's not a wig. Oh, no, I'm sure they think it's a wig. No, they're nudging each other and whispering. No, sir, it's just like the real thing. You're only saying that, Grunge. No, honestly, it would fool anyone. Then fetch the carriage. I must visit my attorney and settle my affairs. No, I wouldn't. Cost you another six and eight pence. <sighs> and you haven't paid him for making your will in the old king's time. <laughs> Then throw some more coals on the fire and I grow cold. I can't, there's none left. What? You gave the last pieces to the servants for Christmas presents. <laughs> I'm too generous, Grant. Then I must warm the inner man. Order me an early supper. Something light. Two cods in oyster sauce. Three fowls boiled. A chine of mutton with capers. A green goose roasted. Asparagus and peas. Followed by codlin tart and cream. Well, I would, sir, but we haven't got it. Then what have we got? Peas pudding. What? <laughs> send for the cook. She's left, sir. Then send for my wife. She'll answer for this. She's left too, sir. <laughs> Tim's gone. Where? To Bath, for the waters. She says she's never been right since she caught her leg in that gin trap you set for the bailiffs. <laughs> Did she take a jewellery? Yeah, I'm afraid so, sir. Mm, I see. So we're alone, Grant. Yeah, yes, sir, yeah. Then send to the village for a plump and lusty wench. I would do battle with Venus. Well, send, but they won't come. You haven't paid them for two years. And they get tubs from the militia. So everyone's deserted me. Mm. Except you, Grant. Well, look at me. Now, you have stood by me, have you not, faithful retainer? And I shall reward you. Sir? Tonight we'll sup at the inner Stretchford, where my credit is still good. We'll eat the best food and drink the finest wines, and you will sit at my table as an equal, Grant. Thank you, sir. I'll <laughs> yeah. get the horses ready. Yes. Uh, don't bother with all that now. It's... Um... One... What? What's this? <clears throat> to Nathaniel Grange, 
steward, 15 pounds, in respect of wages unpaid these last three years. Congratulations, Grange. You have just become a footman. <laughs> Pheasants well hung, a plump capon, a side of beef, if tender, potatoes <laughs> roasted, and two of your best bottles of Madeira. Oh, will that be all, sir? Yes. I dine alone. Not here. You don't. What? You refuse to serve me, you dog? I do. Then take care. You are obliged to provide comfort and succor to the weary chapler between the hours of sunrise and sunset. That's the law. Oh, are you a traveller, sir? Yes. Then keep going. <laughs> I warn you, I am a magistrate. I know you're a magistrate, but judge not lest ye be judged, for on the great day all will be judged and all will be equal. You've been talking to Grange. <laughs> a man's only as good as his money here, so don't ask for credit. The refusal often offends. Um, I have a groat. <laughs> a groat? Uh, you don't see many of those these days. They went out in the 17th century. <laughs> I'll see what I can get you, sir. Uh, a groat? How did you come by it, Grange? I sold my body on death to the anatomists. <laughs> you sold your body for fourpence? Yep. You got a bargain. <laughs> now, sit down, Grange. Oh, I can't sit with you, sir. I'm only a footman. Well, then I'll make you my steward again. And just to show there's no hard feelings, I'll share your humble meal. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See how it treats me, Grange? Oh, things were different once. What happened to the good days when the servants cheered me home with my new bride and tradesmen touched their forelocks in the street when the arrival of a haggard was a joyous occasion? Why have they turned against me? I think it's this rumour that you broke. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this means, Grange? We'll have to evict someone. Near Christmas? Why not? We'll evict Granny Acorn. <laughs> they say she's a witch? That's superstitious nonsense, Grant. Amos Bindweed said it was superstitious nonsense. Now he's a stoat. <laughs> he's not a stoat. Well, they found a stoat sitting in his chair. I don't care if they found a stoat sitting in his chair, wearing his slippers and taking snuff. <laughs> Amos Bindweed planted that stoat to fool his creditors. And I shall have to do the same if things don't improve. No, give Granny Acorn reasonable notice and we'll evict her on Christmas Eve. Mm, if you're prepared to take the risk. You have the beliefs of a South Sea Island, Grange. Still, perhaps I'm being a little bit hard, turning an old lady out at Christmas. We'll evict Cripple Jack instead. <laughs> Cripple Jack? Why not? The last time we evicted him, he dealt me such a blow with his crutch, he almost unmanned me. I owe him one. Ah, landlord, and what have we here? Peas pudding. <laughs> <laughs> landlord! Sir. This piece pudding is, is bad. No. Oh, sir. smell it. I tell you, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, only in the middle. <laughs> only in the middle, then? What do you propose? Eat round the edges. <laughs> what? Is this the way to treat a gentleman, you dog? Gentleman? When Adam wove and Eve span, who was then the gentleman? Mama dear, I say. Are you sure you haven't been talking to him, Grant? No, sir. Oh, it's disgusting. <clears throat> Eats round the edges, indeed. Yes. Uh, which side do you want? We're not going to eat it, Grant. Yes. We menials eat this all the time. <laughs> and that's why you're menials, and that's why they sit you furthest from the fire. What are you going to do? I'm going to warm my backside. At least that's free. <laughs> Are you warm enough, sir? Who, sir? Me, sir? Yes, sir. You, sir. Why do you ask, sir? You keep the fire from me, sir. Do I indeed? <laughs> <laughs> permit me to say, sir, that you're an impudent scoundrel. Now, permit me to observe, sir, that you are a stuffed, overblown glutton whose language is not fit for the ears of a gentleman. Thank you for your caution. I'll amend it when one comes in. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Don't bandy words with me, sir. In raillery and wit, I have met no equal. Then you must stay home a great deal. What? I'm moved from the fire. You are warm enough. And allow me to return to my goose, which is not. <laughs> your goose may not be cooked, sir, but <laughs> you have cooked your goose. How so, sir? You may not know this, but I am a haggard. Well, I won't tell anyone if you don't. <laughs> the haggards broke a front from no man. What? Once this sword is drawn, it will not be sheathed until honour is satisfied and the blade runs red with blood. You obviously conceal a formidable weapon. May I see it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I see it is a little rusty and a trifle blunt, rather like your wit, sir. Touché. What? <laughs> this trusty blade has served the haggards for generations. <laughs> now it seems a touch short, as is your temper. Touché again. Just thank your maker that this sword is broken. That need not handicap us. I have a brace of pistols in my carriage. Ah, in your carriage, but not here. No, sir. Then why don't you fetch them, sir? My goose grows cold. As does your valour, sir. But I'm eating. Oh, well, allow me to season it with a little powder and shot, sir. I'll fetch them, sir. Ah, your servant, sir. Come along, Grant. <laughs> Eat heartily. But what happens when he comes back with his brace of pistols? Oh, you don't believe that. A brace of pistols in his carriage. <laughs> oh. How many times have I heard that one? Oh. Halfway to York, we now, oh. the cowardly rogue. Oh. I frightened him away. That was my stratagem. I love a good stratagem. Mm. Uh, what are you doing, sir? Eating? <laughs> uh, the gentleman had lost his appetite and asked us to finish his meal, eh, Grant? Mm. Well, are you sure, sir? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like to offend Sir Josh. Oh, Sir Josh? <laughs> he's got a large estate, not ten miles hence. Mm. Besides, he's a crack shot and he's killed three men in duels. <laughs> How many men did he say he'd killed? Three. Yes, well, I, I think I've had enough. I haven't. No. <laughs> well, your idea of his enough, Grant, is when he comes out of your ears. You've had enough, and enough is a feast. <laughs> now, make sure the horses are ready. We may have to leave in a hurry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> This way, sir. A room for the lady. She is much shaken by the journey and doesn't wish to be disturbed. I'll have one prepared, sir. Oh, Roderick, must I leave you? Only for a moment, my dove. I'll order some refreshment. But do we need drink when we can suck Jove's nectar? Jove's nectar? She is transported. <laughs> oh, Roderick, it is not the journey that has shaken me, but your hand beneath my petticoat. <laughs> ah. You noticed it, too. Oh, Roderick. Oh, my name upon your lips, tis like music. Then let me hear mine upon yours. Yes. What was it again? Fanny. Ah, oh, Fanny. How could I forget it when it's already engraved upon my heart? Oh, bliss. Oh. The room is ready, sir. I shall count every second. Oh, joy. <laughs> Would you like my wife to attend the lady, sir? No, I'll attend to her. <laughs> How long before the coach leaves? Uh, within the hour, sir. That should be time enough. <laughs> Have you known the lady long, sir? We met on the coach. Ooh, thou art a fast worker, sir. <laughs> the gyrations of the coach and the excessive speeds of over six miles an hour have so inflamed her senses that she is consumed with a raging passion. So no peeping. <laughs> Remember, she is a lady of quality. They say that they're the worst, sir. Uh... Enough of your impudence. And fetch me a bottle of your best Madeira. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Are you eating my bird, sir? Who, sir? Me, sir? Yes, sir. You, sir? No, sir. <laughs> Are you staring at me, sir? Not at you, sir. You're lace, sir. What? It's a disgrace, sir. Lace should waft about a gentleman's neck like gossamer. Yours hangs like a yard of tripe. <laughs> but, you impudent puppy, would you quarrel with me? No, I would not quarrel with you, but I'd fight your tailor to the death, sir. <laughs> Damn it, you're an amusing rogue. I'm something of a blade, sir. Join me, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Have you seen a mean, skulking fellow by the name of Haggard? <coughs> Haggard? <laughs> Take care. The name Haggard is well respected in these parts. Not by me. He's hiding from me, sir. No Haggard ever fled from danger. If he's gone, tis not from fear. If he chooses not to shed your blood, tis because of the festive season when all men are brothers. Is he a good shot? He never misses. Neither do I. Then it should be a close contest. <laughs> I wish I could stay to see it, but I have an affair of the heart. You have a wench with you, you dog. Yes, sir. And if I don't make a mine within the hour, my name's not... What, sir? I must hurry before the coach leaves. Is the coach here? I must go. Your servant, sir. Have you seen a pompous, stupid clown with a brace of pistols? Father! Roderick! Father! <laughs> no, father. If you must wear a wig, which is so out of fashion, at least make sure it's on straight. That's me, you fool! Oh, sorry, father. But what are you doing here? Why aren't you at college? I was sent down for throwing a chamber pot at the dean. <laughs> Has he no sense of humour? It was rather full. Ah, well... <laughs> Perhaps it's for the best. I cannot pay your college debts, Roderick. I'm a ruined man. Never mind, Father. I shall soon be as rich as a London alderman. I'm almost engaged to a lady of quality with 10,000 in the funds. What? She's the only child of a doting father. And when he dies, she inherits the whole estate. Zooms! Then let us drink to his early death. No. Let us drink to Fanny, a paragon of all womanly virtues and a real goer. <laughs> And where is this uh, paragon? She is within, hmm, but soon to be without. <laughs> <laughs> then go to her before she changes her mind. It's not everyone who would marry into the haggards. You mean the madness, Father? Shh! <laughs> go to her, and I'll see you in on. Mm. <laughs> the horses are ready, sir. Good. Ah, oh, Sir Josh. I'm sorry I cannot give you satisfaction at the moment, sir. Landlord! What? I must ask you to wait. I hope you don't mind. Well, it's a disappointment, of course, when you've worked yourself up to something and you're like a coiled spring. I was ready to shoot the pips out of a playing card, Sir Josh. Well, later, perhaps. Oh, well, no, come. The moment has passed. Let us be friends, my hand upon it. I was cold and hungry and my temper was not at its best. I should have realised that you were a gentleman of rank. It was my servant's fault. What? Uh, you may kick him if you like. Bend down, Branch. <laughs> no, I haven't the stomach for it. My daughter was not on the coach. Daughter? Yes. Her aunt was to have put her aboard at Islington, and I decided to meet her here and convey her home. After all, they say vile Vincent frequents these parts, and no woman is safe. No woman is safe from vile Vincent. They say no one is as vile as vile Vincent. <laughs> I made inquiries. I was told the only passengers to alight were a dissenting minister, a merchant from York, and a young couple. Well, perhaps she caught a later coach. No. Fanny is an obedient girl. She would not disobey me. <laughs> Fanny? <laughs> Come, let us make further inquiries. Well, one moment. May I speak, sir? No, you may not. Let him speak, Haggard. <laughs> you may speak, Grange. Let us... Let us examine the problem. <laughs> we have no reason to doubt that her aunt saw her aboard the coach at Islington. Four passengers alight. A dissenting minister, a merchant, and a young couple. Now we know she could not be the minister or the merchant. <laughs> that, so that leaves... <laughs> that leaves a young couple. But she travelled alone. No. She commenced her journey alone, so you think of her as a woman alone. But if you... Ooh. <laughs> if you think of her as one of a couple, then we have the answer. But that's unthinkable. Fanny is a good girl. No. It's impossible. No. We have eliminated the impossible. What we have left, no matter how improbable, nears the truth. That is logic, sir. You speak like a buffoon, Grant. Your servant's no fool, Haggard. But you're no fool. <laughs> they say I'm the thinking man's servant, sir. You have done well. Yes. Remind me to reward you, Grant. Our next step is to... Our next step <laughs> is to trace the young couple. Now, she may already be at the mercy of vile Vincent. I think I know where they are. Landlord! Damn your eyes! Where's that wine? This is thirsty work! It's Master Grudry! Hello, Grunge! We thought you were vile Vincent. Grunge, I have had my moments, but I have never been as vile as vile uh, Vincent. <laughs> Roderick, you don't understand. Just now, this gentleman... Do you know this lady well, sir? As well as any man, I'll wager. <laughs> How well is that, sir? No vulgar curiosity, please. Suffice to say, her skin is like cream, her lips like cherries, her eyes like damsons, and her breasts like pomegranates. <laughs> and does this bowl of fruit have a name, sir? <laughs> a name? 
Damn it, I knew it when I came in. Could it be Fanny, sir? Ah, oh, Fanny. This gentleman is looking for his daughter, Roderick. No, it's not Fanny, it's Prudence. That's it, Prudence Peascott, an old family friend. An old family friend, and you couldn't remember her name? Well, when I say old family friend... Roderick, you keep me waiting, will you not come? Fanny. Father! I am undone. She is undone. No, no. Well, only a couple of buttons. <laughs> my pistols! And not the pistols! He is my son! You're right. I'll not waste powder and shot on the scoundrel. The blade! Oh. I think. Huh? You're soft! On your answer! If you want the taste of cold steel, you shall have it! Thrust! Parry! Repost! <laughs> Ain't this rather short? Not as short as you're going to be, you rogue! I'm unfairly matched! Stand back! No, Roderick! Do not harm him. He is my father. Be content. I shall not harm one hair of his venerable head, nor shed one drop of his blood. He who gave you life is safe from my rage. One more step and I'll blow your brains out. <laughs> they are not primed, sir. What? Then I bid you farewell. But you will not keep us apart. I am a haggard. We snap our fingers at fear. We laugh at danger. <laughs> Until we meet again. Farewell. Roderick the fool will kill you! What? Ah! Ah! The lack of the haggards. He's just fallen into a passing manure cart. <laughs> Landlord, fetch the constable. No, father. I have not been wronged. I am still chaste. My virtue is intact. Mm, you must be slowing down. <laughs> thank God. Then we only have one man to thank. You, Grunge. I owe you a great debt. Take this, sir. Thank you, sir. To the carriage, Fanny. As for you, sir, you will hear from me. So, you're the thinking man's servant, are you, Grange? Well, you know how it is. <laughs> yes, I know how it is. Mm -hmm. Bend down! What, now? Yes, now! <laughs> and keep still! I'm going to take a run at this one. <laughs> well, I suppose it's worth it for five guineas. <laughs> On the other hand, Grange, why should we quarrel, oh, faithful old retainer? Oh, you mean I'm your steward of again? Of course you're my steward again. And you know what my steward does. Well, to tell you the truth, I've never been quite sure. He looks after my finances. What? <laughs> Landlord, more Madeira! Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.